Selling 3D products on the Blender market in 2023 and beyond. I've got five points that I want to talk through and I'm hoping that this can assist you and equip you in better and more effective selling on the Blender market in the near future. And these points are product views, traffic information, sales tools, sales strategies and financial data. Let's jump straight in and get to those points. Now, product views. Um, common strategy is this, and I don't agree with it, but it is this. Post about your products to social media, your YouTube, your Instagram, and your Facebook. And the reason I don't necessarily disagree with it or agree with it, I can see where it comes from. But if you have a small Instagram channel or a small YouTube and Facebook channel, then posting to these channels are not gonna do much good in terms of marketing and selling. A much better way to do this would be to talk about your product on a site for Blender users. Now, Blender Market sells Blender models and Blender Nation is a website that, that informs Blender users about certain things happening in the community tutorials and products. So it's much more effective taking your products, creating a product on Blender Market, posting that link um, in the Blender Nation area. Now, Blender Nation is fairly straightforward in terms of posting and it has a massive view viewer base every month i think last time i checked it was about eighty thousand views a month um, and that is a much wider reach than you're going to get on a small social media platform so doing this is fairly straight straightforward navigate to blender nation create the login and account and then create or click on post a story and then it gives you the image size of whatever product you want to upload upload it there with a link to your product and a little bit of a description and you are good to go. Point number two, use traffic information to your advantage. Now you wanna gather as much traffic information as what you possibly can. One of the ways that you can do that is hypothetically speaking, say you have effective YouTube, Facebook and Instagram channels or social media strategies or platforms rather, then copy the link to your character 001 or whichever product on Blender Market, paste it into Bitly or whatever link shortener you use and make three derivatives character 001 yt for youtube character 001 fb for facebook character 001 ig for instagram take those three links and put them in the various places youtube facebook and instagram um, by the extension you can see which one goes which but they all go to the same product the nice thing here is that whenever one clicks it counts as a click that you can track in bitly um, so i can see if i get 500 uh, clicks on the character 001 YT, I know that my YouTube is an effective um, viewing platform to market that product. If I get two clicks on FB, then I know Facebook is maybe not the way forward for me. Um, but in any case, that gives you enough information to make a sales dec decision depending on your strategy build the the weaker area in terms of marketing or focus purely on the strong area and go forward there point number three sales tools now blender market has a great sales tool called the pack variants now pack variants does this essentially it creates smaller variant variants of a larger pack so say a customer sees your pack and they're interested um, and they navigate to your pack on the blender market but they only want half of the content in there um, but you're selling only the full pack for about $35, um, then they're gonna leave your shop on Blender Market and go to another seller on Blender Market or they might even entirely go somewhere else online. Now, once a customer does this, once he exits your shop, um, it is very unlikely for that customer or shopper rather to return to your shop. So you want to keep him in your shop for as long as you can. In real retail, this is called dwell time. Now, the longer you have a person dwell in your shop, the higher and more effective the chance is of that person buying something. So create pack variants that make sense in terms of content that will sell. I can sell a building and then I can sell the electrical units from the building and I can sell the plumbing from the building and other aspects in smaller amounts of smaller packs. And then a customer can handpick. Bottom line is you've created a one-stop shop where there is variety at varying price levels. And this really caters well to any customer. 
Point number four is sales strategies. Now, one of my sales strategies is I've identified four YouTubers that I reach out to and they do similar videos to the kind of content that I sell on Blender Market or at least the content that I sell would be very applicable for them in their videos. Um, and so I've given each of these YouTubers an affiliate link and what that affiliate link does is whenever a product is sold by clicking on a link in their YouTube channel which they share in their description area, then Blender Market splits the sale value to a certain percentage going to that YouTuber and a certain percentage coming to me. So there's, no, there's, no, there's no admin or difficulty in the point of sale or in the transaction. They are immediately incentivized for having a link to my products on their channel. And it helps them as well. It incentivizes them in the way that they want to then post some of my content because they make a profit from doing so. Um, and I win. It's a win-win for everyone um, because I tap into their audience and their audience, the pool of viewers that they have is much larger, larger than, than the viewers that I have. And that's an easy way for you to extend your reach in terms of products on Blender Market and people seeing those products on Blender Market. Point number five is financial data. Now, Blender Market in your dashboard area at product level gives you um, your product, its days online, its cost and its earnings, its total revenue. And that's going to inform you what sells and which of your products you should then continue supporting. And when I say support, I mean adding pack variants, I mean adding different render engines, I mean adding different export formats or asset browser compatibility. Support it in any way that make it more sellable um, and then forget about the weaker products. Don't take them offline, but don't necessarily put too much effort into supporting products that are not doing well. Um, in this way, using financial data can just save you a whole lot of time by working more effectively. That's it for the five points. I hope you get something out of this. The bottom line is work as effectively as you can. Get as much information as you can. Blender Market is a great place to be selling up and selling there for years. Um, and it is a very, very effective, but you have to be intentional in how you sell.